I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IBM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IBM swag. So do fill out those surveys. The content marketing space has been ripe for disruption for some time now. And with the advent of the marketplace, as well as the AI-driven capabilities set around content marketing, we are at an inflection point on not just how we market content, but how we create the content supply as well. To discuss this and how AI can help enhance empathy in content writing, I have Sharmin Ali, the founder and CEO of InStoried, on the podcast this week. I'm Varun Dugirala, and this advertising is dead. We're right back with Sharmin Ali. A hundred bucks. That's all it takes to begin your journey with Bitcoin and Ethereum. No, really. With CoinSwitch, you can start investing in over a hundred cryptocurrencies with just hundred rupees. On top of that, there are zero charges for deposits and withdrawals, so you can trade, buy, sell, however and whenever you want. All of this, plus their extremely intuitive interface, makes CoinSwitch the perfect app for beginners in the crypto space. But don't take my word for it. Just download CoinSwitch for free and try it out for yourself. If you'd like more information on cryptocurrencies, tune into a show about crypto with me, Rohan Joshi, my new adventure on IBM Podcasts. Coin switch. Kuch to badlega. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. We with Shaman. I'm going to start with a question which came to me when I went to your website. And before I get into the journey of InStoried, I want to understand how the idea to connect emotions to AI came about because that intrigued me as a concept to itself. So I thought I'll start with that and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, first of all, uh, you know, as in before we talk about how did emotions even come into the picture, mm. I think what is important to understand is that how did even content come into the picture, right? Mm. Because mm-hmm. then we'll be able to connect the dots. Yeah. So, you know, um, back in 2018, after, uh, you know, I'd sold my first startup, I was uh, essentially traveling the world, figuring out what to do. Mm. So, uh, you know, I was working with a few, you know, CXOs globally, helping them create create, uh, you know, their content and build strategies and then essentially how to scale up, right? Mm. Uh, And I'd also written two books of my own. Uh, So, you know, one thing that I'd always known, which is also a very globally accepted fact is that good quality content is king and it's here to stay. And I'd also known that, you know, most people, unfortunately, most marketers don't know what is it that their customers really want, Mm. you know? And that is when I actually happened to do a lot of digging, a lot of research, and I'm a huge nerd when it comes to, you know, reading books. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm a voracious reader. So I read up a lot. And that's when I came across a term called neuromarketing, uh, mm. you know, which essentially mm. meant that if you have to attract a customer, you have to sell to their brain, you know, as in essentially, how do you market to the brain? Um, so that's when it came to me because I spoke with about some 500 odd marketers because I was thinking of doing something in this space yeah. uh, that it turns out that, you know, there are a few emotions that we as human beings, uh, we connect the most with, uh, you know, so if our content is able to exude that particular emotion, that is when, you know, it does stick in our brain. So essentially, how do you make the content stick? Uh, You know, how do you connect with your audiences by connecting with them emotionally? Now, as we all know that, you know, all of the consumer decision making, right? Uh, Like, for example, uh, why am I using an iPhone? Uh, mm-hmm. The reason being that because needless to say that it does add a certain level of prestige to your life, you know, yeah, otherwise sure. I could just stay with a stay with an MI also, which <laughs> will have the same very features. But then because, you know, we, we human beings are predictably irrational. <laughs> so uh, that is where the entire concept of, you know, emotions came in the picture. And I was like, okay, I know good, uh, you know, all the good things about content, but if mm-hmm. I have to be able to scale up globally, um, and you know, be able to create emotional content, then there has to be a tech angle attached to it. That is how you know the whole idea of content technology came into the picture. Mm. That how do you create emotional content using AI? So the yeah. whole idea and the value prop is that how do you use a very data-driven, you know, scalable, repeatable approach using technology? So that's how it occurred. Yeah. You know, uh, one thought kind of comes to mind when you're saying this, right? Is that um, you mentioned almost marketing to the brain in that sense, right? Um, and I'm hearing a lot of this conversation in recent times. Yeah. And and in, in many ways, 
do you feel that's driven because now we have access to a certain amount of data a little deeper than we did before? Do you think um, because you obviously have built it with a certain level of insights, but are you seeing the fact that now because we understand human behavior better and and we have machines who can almost derive stuff from it and then humans who can look into it? Uh, how are you seeing the data kind of evolve and what kind of surprised you when you when you kind of looked at it from that sense? So, um, yes, you're right in a way. Um, you know, first of all, let's just go back to the basics, right? Um, AI is no magic. Anyone who says that, okay, I'm doing X, Y, Z jargon <laughs> in you know, AI is basically just BSing. <laughs> else, you know, AI is no magic. <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically all about the data that you feed into the system. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, uh, basically the machine learning part, you know, in, in, yeah. in simple in terms, whatever the machine learns, that's exactly what it reproduces as, as a result, you know. So data was always available, but the challenge was that, you know, people didn't have the right resources to either scrape that data or to collect that data and to essentially put it in a right format to be mm-hmm. able to train the system to give, you know, the right output that, that we need. Uh, so, yes, now there are multiple resources sources available. Uh, You know, manpower is very, very easily available now. Uh, You know, there are certain platforms, uh, you know, through AI, essentially, you know, Mm -hmm. the the whole field of AI is so large. There are so many things available now. So options, you know, I mean, be it be it human language, like like what we play in, uh, you know, or be it, you know, human faces or be it human eyes or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything. Uh, So there is a lot of data available. And more importantly, there are resources available out there, which which can help you collect and scrape that data and then use the right, uh, you know, technology tools to be able to feed that into the system. So yes, those resources are now readily available and getting the right talent also, uh, mm. you know, build yeah. a tool which can essentially help you develop, uh, you know, what, what you're looking for. That is also much more easily available. So yes, every type of resource is now out there. And I mm. think Getting it, it's 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 not very difficult now. And on the other end of the spectrum, um, you know, there has been this, and I, and I love the fact that you said uh, everyone says I'm working in, in AI is BS, and it's it's <laughs> it's largely machine learning because I totally agree with that fact because. And I think that's also done a lot of, I would say, disservice to what you can actually do with machine learning. Because people assume that, okay, AI is going to come, which means humans are not going to be there. But in many ways, what you're actually doing is you're helping humans perform better Absolutely. at what they're doing. Almost giving them superpowers, right? Is what you're doing. Yeah, we're not replacing humans. We are enabling them, you know, as in making the whole process less time consuming, more efficient, more productive. Yeah. So if I'm going to run through how you would work and how, how the platform functions, if I'm a marketer today, What can I do, which I don't do already, um, if I'm kind of uh, leveraging what you uh, are making me capable of? Right. Uh, So I'll tell you, you know, extremely simple. And and I I like to talk in very simple layman terms because I have a granny who always keeps asking, what do you guys exactly do? (laughs) And I'm like, oh God, if I'm able to explain her, then I think I can explain to anybody. Yeah. So, so, you know, very simple, uh, uh, right? The entire uh, content marketing, uh, so to say, right? Mm. There are, uh, you know, five very basic steps to it. Uh, anyone and everyone would essentially follow. Uh, first thing is that, you know, you would conduct a research on what is it that you want to create, right? Mm. Let's say mm. if you have you know, you have a topic in mind, you want to go look out for what's already there, what's available. And then, you know, of course, a more number of resources. Mm. Um, second thing is that you want to build a strategy around it that, okay, you know, once I've got this content, these are the different platforms I want to publish in, uh, you know, this is my marketing budget, this is my resource budget, etc. So, mm. you know, all the budgeting, all the, uh, you know, all the, all the strategizing around, around your marketing. Third thing is to actually create the content, yeah. <laughs> which is which is of course very important. Uh, so you you create it and then you edit it, you curate it, anything that you might call it. Uh, now this is exactly where where we also come in. Uh, and and the fourth stage is of course uh, you know once the editing is done, then you go ahead and publish it across uh, you know multiple platforms, distributed on multiple media, etc. And final stage is that you know post the publishing, you want to check how has it performed. Right, yeah. because you yeah. spend so much money, you want to know what the performance has been like. Now there are like you know, as in multiple tools available, which which help you do that. Uh, so where we come in is the stage three. You know, we help you create content which is better than what you were essentially creating, because we have a technology available which will you know tell you that okay, amazing. You you know, I mean, you probably have a PhD in in literature. Mm. Uh, but then what happens is that when you you know when you're drafting content, you tend to go haywire. You know, yeah. and it so happens happens that you don't know what is the emotion that your content is you know exuding or 
does it have the right tone because being a writer for me it's really important to you know be able to uh, show the right tone because otherwise if my tone is not right then the opinion that it would set over my mm-hmm. audience is that will also differ so yeah. you know whether it's positive negative neutral now it's not really possible for me as a human being to practically go through some 3000 words that i've written right and you know i mean i might take like 3 to 4 hours to create 3000 words mm-hmm. and then i need another 3 to 4 hours to essentially go through that content edit do all of the corrections and everything however yeah. if there's a tool if there's a technology available that you know while you are creating the content it can read really you know tell you that hey you know what this content this particular piece has been plagiarized from somewhere i mean that mm. that happens mm. all the time you know yeah. so so we have that feature that, that you know it will tell you that okay don't <laughs> copy paste <laughs> you yeah. know no copying come on let's let, let's go original mm. and then you know it it will tell you what is the tone what is the emotion it it will correct your spelling grammar all of these things mm. so all of these things on one platform so it will definitely make your life much easier much more efficient mm. and not just that it will it will also predict uh you know what your audiences are going to feel like uh mm. you know there, mm. there's that whole prediction angle where avoid does is that based on past data and and of course past performance levels it will tell you that okay you know what this is how your audience is going to resonate with your mm. content so mm. make these changes take these recommendations that i'm telling you and then you see what your performance is going to be like so it it corrects it recommends and it helps you create great content which is much more empathetic much easier to connect with you know, what also comes to mind is that especially the, the last part about saying how they're going to feel the problem is not getting access to data the problem is kind of looking through that and seeing which is relevant which is not right so especially in this case like when you're working with brands across categories when you're working with different kinds of requirements how do you map it out to say because our emotional reactions to certain things so like certain products will be different to others if the same words are used i can't come up with one off the top of my head but <laughs> yes. um so how do you map that out without giving any secrets or sort but how would how would right. that kind of work right so so actually it's quite simple you know and and it's a very valid question that is why what we do is that uh you know there is a industry specific division that is being created you know there is an industry specific categorization that has been done uh, right now for example we are working with retail e-commerce players uh you know mm-hmm. primarily because these are the guys you have to create a lot of content i mean be it something as simple as let's say a product listing on an e-commerce website yeah. or be it a search ad banner ad or an instagram facebook twitter ad anything uh, or you know even if it's just a post but these are the guys who need to create the maximum amount of content so what we've mm. done is that you know for for the retail categorization all the content that we have so we have about 15 million plus uh, uh, you know data points that we've collected and uh, with that what we've done is that you know we've tagged them them to um uh, you know the right set of emotions and the tones that the tool is uh, uh, you know which which the which the algorithm shows after processing and then we have trained uh, uh, you know the algorithm on these emotions mm. so we show five emotions you know five basic emotions joy anger fomo fear of missing out mm. sadness and surprise right i mean these are the five basic emotions that we human beings mm. connect with and we show three tones positive negative neutral so after collecting all the data what we did is that you know we tagged it that okay if the sentence is let's say a negative connotation word sentence then then mm. it is being tagged as negative or positive or neutral and if it is positive, positive then what kind of positive is it is it joy is it surprise um a surprise can be both positive surprise negative surprise if it is negative yeah. then whether it's anger or you know whether it's fear of missing out sort of a negative or whether it is negative surprise or you know i mean all of these things is 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 what we did which essentially means that you know there was a lot of manpower uh, needed essentially it, it it took us almost 18 months to you know tag wow. 15 million data points yeah. i mean i'm talking about 1.5 crore <laughs> you know around data points which which took us a long time 18 months almost and then once we did that uh, you know that is when we were able to create this algorithm now for us to be able to let's say move to something like a financial institution mm-hmm. uh, uh you know uh, i mean insurance kind of data right i mean health mm-hmm. insurance data because because it's pandemic time mm-hmm. everyone's right uh, uh, you know like okay this insurance that insurance we need and of course all insurance companies need list to say self fear <laughs> mm-hmm. right yeah yeah so <laughs> so yeah so so we 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 are not catering to you know insurance companies or or financial institutions. institutions as yet mm. uh, but yes in the future when we you know uh, want to diversify our portfolio 
then obviously we would want to get into that that field as well because because there's huge amount of requirement huge market opportunity again but yeah. right now we've started with retail because it's easily available that is how the the segmentation would be done you know you have a background in in content right and i want to kind of take a bit of a segue there and say that if you look at what you were doing pre setting up in story uh, what do you feel your learnings were across your journey that cuz cuz there is a lens right there is a lens to being a content marketer um and and i feel that whenever ad tech if that's the category i can put you in mm-hmm. kind of has that lens right? right that's when you can actually do it well cuz in many ways you are while you're enhancing uh, humans you are also then in some way saying technology is helping them do that so kind of understand what the environments about i feel the main time when it's tech first there's some caveats of what is innately human and, and how we would do it will will not kind of come in so um i don't know if I, like across your journey what are those pieces that you you feel have helped you kind of set it up with this kind of a, a, a lens right so you know there have been many learnings i mean i can't just uh, uh, you know come up with one or two there have been many learnings mm. uh, uh, but but the one that uh, that really strikes me is is because you know since uh, we are also talking about advertising is dead uh, yeah. uh, you know yeah. the first thing is that um, so when you look from uh, from a customer segmentation point of view right i mean i really anyone and everyone is a customer i mean be it someone who's just drafting an email on a daily basis is also a customer because mm. you need to create good emails yeah. uh, uh, however you know from a revenue point of view we we obviously want to be able to sell to people mm. who will be able to afford uh, you know the tool i mean although it is it is not a, a not a highly premium uh, you know service but then still somewhere somewhere in between <laughs> i don't want to scare people by by telling our pricing right now but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but then one uh, one pushback that was there was you know was essentially from the agencies right i mean mm. the content agencies i mean yeah. uh, the guys whose livelihood is nothing but just creating content on, mm. on, a, on a daily basis you know i mean be it even blogs or read articles anything that they draft the first question that they asked me when when i when i went to them because they were also one customer segment and i was yeah. like okay yeah. we need to be able to explore everything they were like are you trying to take over <laughs> you know <laughs> my livelihood with your question AI. every agency will ask you there is no way they will not ask that question absolutely you know and i was like no <laughs> i'm not going to do that but this is essentially not replacing us humans but this is to make your life much easier you know make it more efficient but then there was a lot of backlash a lot of lot of pushback which which came from an agency mm. however when we went to a company you know i mean we are an sme we are a large size company we are an enterprise anything yeah. they were very excited you know because they're like okay you know what i'm working with this agency they charge us so much money half a million dollars per annum i don't know what they do my my numbers aren't correct i think you guys can definitely help me i was like yeah that's my selling point <laughs> yeah. yeah so oh. so you know so that was one learning that we yeah. really had that you know selling to an agency can be a little tough for us however oh, for sure. selling to an enterprise you know who is essentially consulting with that same agency because here the buyer is that company and the end user with that agency you know so when this company tells our agency that okay you know what i've paid for it and i'm paying for you guys i want you guys to use this tool make it mm-hmm. more efficient then there is no way they can say no yeah. <laughs> so that was one quick learning that that we had because we were testing out all the customer segments that we have mm. and it turns out that you know although the enterprise way is a much longer sale for us but it is much long lasting and mm. uh, you know i mean we can we can retain them far easier <laughs> i think that's also been driven and especially recent times the two things right um and i've actually been noticing it from just a market standpoint is that the fact that we we've, we've all had to move to technology solutions over the last couple of years a lot more than we ever have has made most brands open to it and i also feel startups now because a lot of them are technologically driven and all the traditional players have also kind of have to move in that direction they get it faster and i've always said that agencies have moved far slower than than you know, brands actually have right and in and in that case would you say that the way content marketing is traditionally done how do you see that changing because you know with with companies like yours coming in with the kind of products which are there obviously the mix and how it works will change um i'm not saying the the essence of content marketing might not go away but um do you see how we do it uh, change a lot or how we would structure teams who work on it yes absolutely there there would definitely be a change you know because uh, once the whole process starts becoming uh, you know more efficient right so then um, the hr teams are going to be like okay <laughs> yeah it's like cost cutting time i mean needless to say that right yeah. so Yeah. because because then there would be more work being allocated you know 
because my entire uh, value prop here for uh, you know for an agency would be that at least for the leadership team it would be that you know how do you make your processes more efficient yeah. right yeah. so then uh, uh, when you have more time on your hand so then you want to allocate more work uh, so definitely you know there would be that thought that would uh, you know eventually strike uh, within the leadership team that okay uh, uh, you know is it time to think about cost cutting or is it time to you know think about get more work i would look at the brighter side of things i'd be like get more work yeah. <laughs> you know because because uh, that means that you know you have more time on your hand uh, but yes absolutely this is something that uh, you know they would definitely think about in the long run you know, I have a bunch more questions to ask, but I do know we're, we're kind of hitting that time where we need to go in for a break. So I'm just going to quickly take a break and, and we'll be right back with advertising instead. You have to be careful with everything nowadays, even while drinking water. There I was sitting at home, drinking water, massaging my wife's feet. I always do that together because I love my wife. She's my beloved wife. And then my son calls me up from Canada, all the way from Canada. And he says, Dad, have you heard? I mean, I was watching the game at that point. I was a little irritated. I said, heard what? And he said, now you can get Kotak home loans at just 6.5%. Ah, I went crazy. I, 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 mean, I spat all over my own wife. After massaging her feet, I spat there. Can you believe it? And I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I spat over her and all I can say is, Kripya, dhyan rakhiye. Because now I'm sleeping on the living room couch as a result of that. But really, folks, can you believe it? 6.5%, that is incredibly low for a home loan. I mean, just visit www.kotak.com for more info. Terms and conditions apply. Interest rates starting at 6.5% per annum. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. We're still talking to Shamin. I actually I have a question to ask. Is that if you look at your journey pre-setting up the company, um, I'd love to kind of dig into that and saying, A, what did you set out to be? And what is your journey pre-setting up in story like? So, you know, like most other Indians, I'm an engineer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, it, same here. It's like a stamp. Oh, oh, are you serious? Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, same here, same. <laughs> totally related. I did electronics. What about you? Mechanical. Ah, okay, nice. Yes, I'm a very well read <laughs> so, engineer. I did a four year degree in six years, but I'm one of those. <laughs> Congratulations! It's good. It's good. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I I did my engineering with with that stamp on my head. But mm. yeah, um, from 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 Vishweshwaraya here in Bangalore, mm. uh, and then uh, post that I joined a company called Music Mall, which was you know in its very initial days that time, and essentially worked across verticals, you know, doing enterprise things. Started with the technology vertical then moved pharma I've, I've worked with Pfizer um, mm-hmm. then you know Walmart and then a bunch of other players in the BFSI space a bank and you know a very massive uh, insurance tech player in in the US uh, so after doing all of this for almost six and a half years I realized that I was just helping the rich get richer mm-hmm. <laughs> wasn't adding too much value to my own life so yeah. I decided to quit and uh, but then yes I had garnered a massive amount of uh, you know sales experience mm. and that I knew that would, would definitely be something which would help me in the long run that's when I quit and I came back to India to start my first company which was in the media space uh, you know so so the whole Netflix revolution had already begun in the US uh, but in India people were still very much prone to you know consuming content on their television sets because the geo internet thing hadn't yet happened yeah, yet yeah you know? yeah so, so uh, uh, mobile devices, OTT platforms, laptops weren't really that big a thing. But then once the whole, uh, uh, you know, geo revolution happened, and then we realized that, okay, we were a little ahead of our time in this. Mm. Uh, but then we'd created a lot of content. I've written some, some 70 scripts of my own. Mm. And uh, we created a lot of digital content on YouTube, on Vimeo. Then after three and a half years, we ended up selling the copyrights of all the scripts to a very famous Bombay-based production house, Mm -hmm. which is now creating a lot of that content on Amazon Prime. And I love seeing them. (laughs) 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 Okay, that is mine. But yeah, anyway, though I have no rights on them, so I can't claim anything. But Mm. still, so that happened. And then post that... you know, after after exiting from my first startup, I realized that okay, I I have this huge thing for for you know writing, and I think writing comes naturally to me mm. for some reason, and 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 I have a lot of stories to share. So that's when I uh, you know also wrote two books. Your second book though has a very interesting title, which I which I, which yeah. I really want to ask you about. <laughs> I want you for I want you to first tell the audience what the title is, and I want you to, and because you you released it recently as well. Yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, the second book is called How I Was Forced to Become a Staunch Racist. Um, you know, and you won't believe it, but I actually had court summons, you know, when I published this book. 
<laughs> I've always been like, you know, one of those uh, controversial people. I've had comments twice in my life. <laughs> uh, but, but thankfully, my mom's a lawyer. And so, you know, okay. So, go, go. <laughs> okay. so, so yeah, so um, the reason it's so called is because um, once you read it, then you know that, you know, uh, why it's so called. Because so it's essentially something that talks about poor parenting in, in this country, uh, that being the biggest reason responsible for all of the depression among the youth in this country, because I have been a victim of depression. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, I mean, I think most of my childhood has been really depressing because of multiple events. I almost got killed twice, uh, you know, as, as a kid, once during the Gujarat riots and, you know, mm-hmm. once before that, during the horrific earthquake that happened in Gujarat. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, lots of such things happened. And then as a result of which I realized that, you know, I mean, there is too much of story that I have in my head and I need mm-hmm. to reproduce it onto the, you know, into mm-hmm. a book. Uh, so it, it um, so it talks about the depression a problem among youth. It, 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 it talks about poor parenting in this mm-hmm. country. And, you know, it, it, it talks about uh, essentially how the youth is um, so unaware of, you know, mm. how the whole evolution happened. So essentially, it connects the youth of this country. It connects poor parenting and it connects evolution and builds a story around, you know, how we, the youth, are being trained uh, uh, in, in, in a certain way to become yeah. not, not racist. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is what it is. In and from day. that, and from a book, which focuses on that, on the other end, you're building out how technology can make us more human. So it's a, <laughs> I, I'm drawing some interesting parallels here or some interesting connections here, because maybe the way for us to be less racist is also a machine telling us that, okay, what you're saying doesn't, you, you, do you really want to say that? Like, you know, it's almost like I, I every time, um, and I know this happens on Twitter a lot. It's when you try to retweet something without reading it, it says, are you sure you want to retweet it without reading it? Yes. Uh, in the same way, I, I, I guess we do need, um, uh, almost like we're setting ourselves some checks and balances to make sure that we also kind of learn. So <laughs> that's that's, the, that's my, that is my connection between both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the irony also, right? That, you know, we don't know uh, uh, where to put that balance. So, yeah, we need a machine to tell us that, okay, you know what, woman, <laughs> calm down <laughs> to watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, to check the language a bit. So, yeah, yeah those, those checks and balances are important. So, if I have to ask you this, um, if I'm an aspiring content marketer today um, because a large amount of the audience of this podcast um, apart from people from the industry are also a lot of young people either starting or either finishing off college, starting off their first jobs or someone trying to do a bit of a switch in their career. What would you say are things that they need to keep in mind? What do they need to kind of learn to be better content marketers going ahead uh, to be better content creators rather going ahead? Because as technology becomes a core part of what we all do, how do people kind of make sure that they're ready for what's coming up um, and not really focusing on what they're already kind of doing, which is which is pretty much the traditional way of doing things. Right. So, you know, first of all, um, the thing is that even before you get to the whole content creation aspect, right, uh, the first most important thing, and this again comes from personal experience because I've read over a thousand plus books. Mm. Um, you need to be a good reader first. You know, mm. you, you, you should have read a lot to be able to tell stories yourself, you know, I mean, either verbally or, you know, through a written platform, anything, but for you, uh, uh, you know, to be able to tell better stories, it's extremely important that you've read other people's stories because, uh, you know, that's when you start drawing parallels and then you understand that a very, very simple thing, right? I mean, uh, what happens in most Hindi movies, there is a whole pattern, Right. Mm. I mean, there is a there is a structure to storytelling. Right. Yeah. There is the male protagonist and the female protagonist. And, you know, both of them are in a situation. They are in a, you know, uh, um, they are in a soup and they don't know how to be together because probably the females, uh, uh, you know, the girl's father who is the villain. Mm. He doesn't want them to meet. And yeah. so, you know, then they have to come out of the soup. And then mm. so, so that is how the whole plot is built. Right. Yeah. But then how would you know these things? Had you not had you not consumed like, you know, I mean, a hundred plus Bollywood movies. Yeah. Uh, so there is that whole pattern of, you know, I mean, storytelling, there's a formula to it. You know, mm. I mean, anyone who says that, okay, you need to have great vocabulary, 
that's not true you don't need to have a great vocabulary what you need is to understand these little elements to your story you know yeah. and you would come to that stage only when you've either read a lot of content or you know you've you've seen a lot of content depending on of course whichever platform uh, uh, whatever you know format of content that you want to create mm. um but to be able to write great content you should be able to first read a lot of content uh you know do your research right understand how these people are written because writing is not just it's not difficult but it's not very easy also you know yeah. it, it it does take some time to be able to understand and reproduce your thoughts in a way so that you know your audiences are able to connect with you and that happens only when you have read other people's content and you as a writer were able to connect with them so first thing please read <laughs> you know a, a lot of good books there are there are um, there are millions of amazing books out there once you've read it then you'll automatically start understanding and resonating better with the way people are trying to explain their stories and then of course um switch to a platform i mean you know like for example the kind of uh, platform that we've built it's essentially you know catering to all of your needs i mean what we want to do from the very beginning was that it should be able to correct something as basic as your spelling your grammar uh, you know it should be able to tell you what are the num- number of words that you've written uh, you know it should be able to tell you uh, what is the tone what is the emotion what is the opinion that you uh, you know which which your content is resonating with then you know i mean is it original is it plagiarized short form long form content absolutely no limit on the on the number of words so all of these things so you know it would be nice to start with a platform like ours uh you know because because it would essentially make your content creation exercise really easy because it's it's an end to end uh, uh you know tool which has all of the things on just one platform and then that's not all before you publish it you would want to get feedback you know from let's say your peers your friends etc so we also have that collaboration engine in place so i don't need to save my content separately and then send out email you know you need an end to end platform to be able to cater to all of your content creation requirements mm. a tool like ours which has been designed especially for the needs of you know someone who's who's either an amateur is just creating starting to create content or someone who's been doing it for years um so yeah and then it's it's just about practice um towards the end of every episode i ask my guests um a series of questions um and these are more about the guess we actually have already asked you a few because i asked you about the book beyond what you do at work what do you spend a lot of time a lot of time doing what do you what do you focus on what was the set of activities that people also would be like you obviously you read a lot um you are in 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 the content space uh, with technology but what, what beyond that uh, keeps your interest so i love traveling uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately because of the pandemic that has been happening yeah. i've been to some 50 plus countries and i've been everywhere alone because i'm one of those solo backpacking types okay. <laughs> you know so i've uh, i've done that a lot i love uh, um, i love trekking uh, mm-hmm. you know all of these things and mm-hmm. um, i think had i not been an entrepreneur i would have definitely been an actor you know that is something <laughs> that that just comes naturally to me i have absolutely no fear of speaking mm. uh, i've i've done i've performed in like 100 plus uh, you know plays mm. performed in you know a, a multiple places uh, globally mm. and uh, so yeah acting is something that i would have definitely pursued had i not been doing what i'm doing that comes my next question which has actually been the question i've asked in every single episode of the show is saying what what can you put together in an instant um multiple things actually <laughs> what is it that what is it that you would want me to put together <laughs> in all these episodes no one's actually said that everyone's trying to figure out that one thing you're the only person who's ever said multiple things um so i i'm going to leave it at that i'm not going to ask you what those multiple things are i mean yeah. there's nobody who said what <laughs> let it be <laughs> yeah um any, anything you'd recommend uh, that you that you've read recently listened to or watched um absolutely um I just finished watching the last season of The Crown guys please go watch it I just love it. <laughs> um, I have I have practically watched everything on Netflix yeah. uh, but but Crown is like my personal favorite mm. and 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 uh, the season 4 that just came out was oh my god it's amazing watch it watch it watch it <laughs> uh yeah Margaret Thatcher's role is like it's the best it's amazing uh, yeah yeah amazing so uh, the crown and uh, what was the other question i'm sorry uh, what, what, uh, anything you've read recently that you recommend um yes i um I recently read a book called Game Theory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 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 quite boring but uh, <laughs> but 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 very interesting also at the same time for uh, you know for the kind of people who actually love to consume non-fiction. Mm-hmm. I think you should definitely read Game Theory. Yeah. 
and uh, and what is generally my my last question which is also always an evolution of the show um i'm i'm trying to make this not contrived but why do you think the whole machines plus humans way of content marketing will not die because i'm here to stay <laughs> 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 um well uh, uh, because um, you know i mean uh, logically speaking the thing is that um, now it is the time to uh, you know for for us humans to practice a little more convenience mm. <laughs> you know um, each and every other startup each and every other business out there is basically built on convenience right mm. i mean the mm. zomato ola uber everything is about yeah. is is about convenience yeah. so here also in the whole content space there has to be some leeway some convenience given to you know to content marketers and uh, that cannot be done manually you know because because yeah. the whole manual approach is very intuition driven and uh, there has to be a tech driven approach which would essentially replace the intuition driven approach mm. hence uh, it is here to stay Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, uh, I've also kind of enjoyed how you simplified things, and I feel that like that's that's actually the best part is the, is the fact that, the fact that most times when we talk about any way that technology kind of comes into the mix, um, the conversation tends to get a lot more complicated, which also then alienates the set of people who might not get how it will help them. Absolutely. Um, so I must say that thank you for simplifying it because most people kind of get how it can add something to their lives, and uh, and thank you for coming on advertising instead. Thank you, Varun. If you like this podcast and you want to listen to more podcasts like this, head over to the IBM Podcast website or app or wherever you get your podcasts from and look at all the podcasts that IBM makes. There's some really fun stuff there. Hey everybody, it's been a great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Cyrus says, singer and music composer Osho Jain tells Cyrus all about his debut album Sar. Want to find out all there is about mixed martial arts on Simplify Chuck Nair and Tony and Shrike speak to Siddharth Rao, a national level kickboxer. On All Things Follows, Sapni JK and Mega Parthi join Mihir Mahajan to discuss regulatory initiatives related to the use of AI. And on Football Ship, Paul Sivas Apre and Karthik talk about the action packed game week that it was. Man U, Barcelona and India losing their games on the same day, Mo Salah's hat trick and a whole lot more. Do follow us on social media where IBM podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, Quarter, CoinSwitch, Kuber, Flay Coffee, Intel, Kotak Mahindra Bank and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Given the unprecedented times our nation is going through, where positive is now a dreaded word, Smile India gets you delightful news from across the country. about people and places that continue to spread the much needed hope and positive vibes i am shifa maitra and you can hear smile india with me every thursday on the ivm app website or wherever you get your podcasts from oh and did i tell you smile india is available in both english and hindi